so i am bhavna as okay i have been with big basket for about 3.5 years now and uh, for the first one year i was a qa engineer there and i transitioned into product so it's been almost 2.5 years in product and uh, all the learnings i think have been very closely connected with pragmatic leaders and it has given me a chance to uh, engage with all of you right so and why the session is because so i have given a lot of interviews and recently from the past 6 months i have been taking a lot of interviews at big basket so now that i have at least like good enough amount of knowledge i thought i should share it with all of you right so let's get started i'll just share my screen right uh, are you guys able to see my screen yes we are able to see your screen Great. So, I mean, thanks for joining. I know it's pretty late in the day. We have only about seven slides, and we'll try to close it uh, as soon as possible. And we'll take in more questions. Okay. So, starting is how do we um, how how can you crack a PM interview? And this is especially with respect to a e-commerce company. and this is because i honestly don't even know about um, other companies for example fintech and things like that so this would be very specific to e-commerce or whatever i'm talking about right so this one second right so let's uh, begin so the basic skill set which the hiring manager is looking for is um some of the common things which you might have already heard about so but this is as part of my learning right so just for the sake of this session let's assume i am the interviewer and you are the candidates so that it becomes uh, understandable slightly easier right so the first thing that i would check on is the storytelling right so for example if you think about developers their core area would be for coding right so what is that core area for a product manager it is how you explain things to people right so what is basic for you may not be basic for me right so for example if at all you're going to let's say talk about um so recently i was talking uh, to one of the candidate and who was from fintech and trust me um the way he was talking to me i could not even understand half the things because the domain is pretty different right so what i would suggest is whenever you're going to whenever even if you're starting new or you already have had experience a uh, one suggestion would be that talk to the other person as if he does not have any knowledge about your domain right so so the way you tell is what matters because even in your everyday life you will have to do this storytelling to your engineers you will have to do this for your stakeholders so try to tell uh, in such a way about your feature that the other person understands very easily right like don't use jargons and all of that correct so so that was the uh, main i think that is the main uh, thing that i would check in any uh, pm candidate right so going forward um, the pace of speaking so some people generally talk slow um, i would say it's a natural advantage that they have got uh, but in case you are a person who would speak fast i would say that at least in the interviews you should definitely slow it down one is because the other person uh, again might not understand what you're saying very easily so at least if you speak slightly slowly there is a high chance that the other person will be able to catch up at least right so don't don't speak too fast that i mean this could be applicable in general for everyone but i think for a pm whose major job is to do the talking i think you should definitely uh, speak slightly slowly right so coming to the documentation okay so i'll give you one more example um so recently i saw one resume where um, it it was written something it it was related to some house renting kind of a organization of a company um so what i understood is uh, maybe i understood only 50% of the resume okay so i was almost on the verge i even told the hr that probably i should reject this candidate right here because if i cannot understand what is written in his resume then what is the quality of the spec that he will write i mean if engineers or the stakeholders are not able to understand then maybe uh, i mean there's no point 
right but then um i saw i thought okay let me take the interview and then give him this feedback so what i learned is he was actually good in everything so he was a very quick learner his uh, storytelling skills were good Uh, so in the end i told him that look i want to pass you to the next round but i doubt on your documentation skills because i could not understand half the things in your resume and i almost spent one hour just to understand so maybe um, make sure that your resume is understandable by any person like if one pm cannot understand another pm's resume then it's a no go right there so what i told him was i will give you an assignment you come back with the solution if i can understand the solution just by reading that document i will pass you to the next round i and guess what he actually did a very good job and i have passed him to the next round so what i'm saying is uh, this could be a corner case but many of the times we could just reject your resume right there so be very careful when you're writing uh, your resume try to keep it in very simple words right so uh, the fourth point is don't digress right so this is a common thing for everyone uh, even be it engineers or anyone but uh, this is very important for pm i'll tell you right uh, a pm's day most of the time i think if at all there are any pms in this session i'm sure half the day would be spent in meetings itself right so probably where you are the speaker correct so you have to ensure that you don't digress from the main point right even so even though first thing you should ensure that you should not digress from the main point and even if there are multiple people where the conversation is going in a different tangent maybe you are the one who should bring them back right so these things we can judge in an interview itself so i'll tell you how so so let's say you would have mentioned about some five features that you have worked on okay so i would ask you something okay uh, can you explain me this feature a now in that case talk only about the feature a so don't don't do that okay you will start talking about feature a and then you'll go to feature b and then you spend 5 minutes there so don't don't do that okay do not digress from the main answer right and one more thing which i would like to tell us um, in one of the interviews i literally got bored okay so it was not even interesting and i got bored because that person did not stop answering a question okay if i asked some question he just went on for like 10 minutes and probably he did not even notice my facial expressions so th- these are all um, it's a no go okay so what i'm trying to say is if at all i ask you a question try to keep your answer in like less than 5 minutes okay probably explain the main things and ask uh, would you like to would you like me to explain in more details probably if he says yes then yes then go on but maybe he might say no i have gotten my answer maybe you don't have to stretch it so much because i mean both both you and me we get only one hour to interview and we have to decide whether you will be passed to the next round or not so make sure you give enough room for the interviewer so that she or he they can ask you maximum number of questions and judge you better right so so the point was do not digress okay so coming to the fifth point is don't jump on to the answer right so if you think about it um in in a in a day of a pm you will get a lot of questions be it for uh, whenever an engineer is developing something new some new feature uh, he will be stuck and he will ask you a question so just don't jump on to the answer of what comes to your mind quickly take a minute and probably spend just spend 2 minutes there and then tell your answer so you so it's okay to tell even the interviewer or the engineer that you'll be working with that okay give me 2 minutes i will uh, tell you i will think about it and tell you the right answer so these are some of the important things I, i'm telling you this because i myself did the mistake in the initial initial uh, few months that whenever an engineer asked i was like okay i think this is what we should do and let's do it right but later when i consulted it with my manager she told no probably this is not what it should have been maybe you should think more about an answer and then give it so it's okay even if you delay by a bit but give the best answer so the same thing will be judged in an interview also that um, i will ask you a question so don't be like ha huh, we i'll do this uh, we can do that so tell that okay let me think about it uh, give me 2 minutes and just keep a pen and paper aside so that um, you can just quickly scribble things and you will get more such thoughts 
right? So just do, don't jump onto the answer, right? And I think uh, the fifth one is pretty uh, generic one that be open to feedback, right? So this is very critical for a PM, okay? Uh, then if you compare it with engineers or someone else, and I'll tell you why. See, it's because let's say you're an engineer and you're doing some coding, okay? So maybe uh, his manager and his manager may review the code and they will um, give feedback, okay? Like good code or bad code, or this is what you need to improve. So maybe there are only two more people who will review someone's code. But in case of a product manager, it's not just two people. <laughs> Everyone will have something to say, right? Even the designer will have something to say, right? Even an engineer, a developer will have something to say. Maybe he has gotten better ideas. A QA especially, uh, because they know the product. Uh, I mean, they have that thinking of uh, edge cases and all. So maybe they will come up with two, three more scenarios, which you might have missed in your spec. Right. So always be open to feedback. Right. So this is very critical and always accept it with a smile. Right. So, for example, I'll, I'll give you um, an example of a recent interview where. So I asked a question. He answered something back. So I was not convinced enough. And I, I told him that uh, maybe this is not the right answer because you are compromising on the customer experience. Right. So he said, that's true, that, that's right. Let me think about another answer. So if at all you can accept uh, feedback positively with a smile, it would be better. So I'm not saying you should always accept whatever uh, the interviewer is saying. You, if at all you think it's a strong point, you should definitely discuss more about it. And that is again a plus point that, okay, you are not just going with whatever the stakeholder is saying just to please that person. But if at all your point is strong, if you think that it is still valid, maybe you should definitely uh, talk more about it. Again, with, with a smile, right? Not like not an argument kind of a face. So these are some of the basic skill sets um, that I would check on right in the first interview, right? So coming to e-commerce PM. Um, so, so this is something which... Um, uh, which I added very late because Sarika recommended that uh, probably if you can talk more on e-commerce, it would really help because that is the new uh, buzzword right now, right? So e-commerce PM, uh, I just take about five minutes here, okay? What is that you need to understand, right? And uh, you would have seen one classical Venn diagram where it will say a PM is supposed to understand technology, business, and design. Right? So it is very much true. You are supposed to know that plus more things. That is what it means. But these three are the basic uh, criteria, I would say. Uh, so coming to technology, okay. Uh, let's say if at all you are a developer or you are from QA background, then great. You are already, you have passed this level, which is a very good thing for you. Now, let's say you are not coming from a technical background at all. And, or let's say you are a fresher, for example. So in that case, what I would like to recommend is try to understand the basics, right? Like what is a server? What is a client, right? For example, client, um, for example, Big Basket is on four clients. It is on Android app. It's on iOS app. It is on desktop website and it's also on the mobile website. So maybe you need to understand what are the different clients that I have. So what is it that is communicating this information to these clients? So it is the server. Right. So these are essential because um, like whenever you are, you are going to build a new feature, you will have to say that, OK, this can be only handled in the server level. We do not need any client change or if at all you're changing some screen UI elements, then probably you don't need any server effort. You will only need the client side effort. Right. So, so what I'm trying to say is even if you understand some of these basic things, uh, you will be a good a good candidate for a PM because I think technology is the first thing that uh, a PM definitely needs to understand because you will have to prioritize what is high effort or what is low effort, right? So I, I think if at all you're new to this, I would highly recommend you to um, go to Talvinder's live classes, which he's conducting on Pragmatic Life. So it, I think it would definitely help um, for beginners at least, right? 
and one of the other things uh, client and server apart from that is it could be payment gateways right so any online app you will see it will have a payment option right so probably you need to understand how does a payment gateway work like if at all you become let's say a payments uh, product ka pm then it becomes very important right if you know this then it's good maybe uh, if at all the interview is for that particular product then you would if at all you would already know this then you are already halfway through so basic things if you know then that will be great right so coming to the business uh, business terms uh, these are some things which which every e-commerce company would be talking about in the day to day life okay so conversion rate what does this mean conversion rate simple example that i can give is let's say 100 people came to big basket and only 50 people placed the order so the conversion is 50% the order placement conversion is only 50% or maybe how can we improve it right so similarly for netflix it could be something else conversion will mean something else for each product it's different so for netflix what it could mean is okay 100 people came on the netflix website but only 10 people watched something so there you can say that watching watching rate ka conversion was only 10% right so these are the basic terms that uh, you would if at all you know then it be great right so coming to uh, acquisition and retention so again so acquisition would mean that um, let's say you have 100 customers today now how do you ensure you grow this number how do you ensure you get the next 100 set what would be your acquisition strategies right so it is not just for marketing but it is a very core part of the product right and for example retention so one of the interview questions could be um, they will ask okay what will you let's say today my retention is only 40% now how do you ensure my retention uh, goes to 60% right so these are some of the questions which they could ask so if at all you know these terms then it would be easier for you to build your solution right and and talking about retention uh, you would uh, you would know about loyalty programs right Like I'm sure most of you would be an Amazon Prime member or a BB Star or Swiggy Super. You might have, right? So what I would say is, um, you should first have the product thinking mindset, right? So what I mean is, let's say whenever you are buying a subscription or when you are going through the loyalty programs, just try to think about it that oh, why are they offering these three things? So maybe um, let's say we we are saying that. you will get priority slots like you will get early delivery if at all you are a normal amazon member probably you'll get the delivery in 10 days but if you are a prime member then you'll get it in 2 days right so maybe that is one of the major uh, benefit which amazon prime customer might be getting so so what i'm saying is um, whenever you encounter these things in your day to day life try to think more about it from a product angle that why did they build this right so Aha uh-huh. the fourth one is uh, slightly connected to retail uh, retail i mean like let's say mantra or big basket for example uh, people will use things like okay are you a marketplace kind of a model or are you inventory led model right so these are some of the terms if at all you know then it'll be better so by by marketplace what i mean is if at all um, the seller he will just um, list his products in your website let's say amazon and then he will directly send that product to you right so that is your marketplace model inventory led um, for example it is something uh, example big basket right so or even nature's basket so what happens in inventory led model is the vendor he will come and for example amul amul is my vendor amul company will come and they will give all the amul products to our warehouse and then we we stock it in our warehouse and then we give it so that is your inventory led model right uh, so if at all you are going to any retail uh, kind of e-commerce interview then it would be better if you know these terms so that even you can ask such questions right so they will think okay maybe uh, she does understand all of these terms right so it will give you an edge that that's what i mean and coming to analytics so this is a this is again a very important thing for a pm uh, which will have to be tracked right so by analytics what i mean is um for example maus uh maus means monthly active users 
so how many people are actually active on your website every month right so you might need to track that only then you will know what is your active customer base for example right and similarly new visitors how many new people are coming on to my website every day right so can i do any customizations there for new visitors so that they can shop very easily right and and similarly drop offs right so drop off would mean uh, let's say you are a new visitor you came on to the website you just checked something or uh, you went till payment page and maybe you dropped off right so these are something which if at all you know these terms okay uh, here is where people are dropping off so things like this if at all even you know the idea then it will definitely help you so i mean just just to uh, tell you that i will be uh, talking about such e-commerce fundamentals uh, starting tomorrow in my pragmatic life classes so if you are interested to understand uh, e-commerce related product management uh, i hope to see you guys there also right so that was about business terms now coming to the design okay design trust me i had no idea about design when i joined so it's absolutely okay even if you do not understand design very well okay but uh, what i would say is try to know the design uh, because it again whenever they trying to give you any assignment for example if at all you understand the ux and the ui then you will be able to come up with better solution right so so what i mean by ux and ui again uh, it is something which even uh, if you understand it will be better uh for example ui ui is something let's say you are designing an icon um, how is that icon supposed to look the colors and all of that right so that is something which a ui designer would build correct now where to place this icon or where to place this button is something which the ux designer will decide right so maybe for example search functionality it is something which is used it is used a lot in any e-commerce if you think about it then what you have to ensure is that you place that search button very easily accessible right maybe towards the bottom of the screen right so this is the difference between ui and ux so if at all you are trying to get into especially the front end side of product management taking care of the customer experience i would um, highly recommend you to read some design books right so actually i learned uh, all of design uh, one thing was from these books right these were recommended by the ex cto of big basket promoter and trust me these are very simple books and anyone can understand okay and just by reading this books probably i could get into that mind frame of design thinking like even okay why why should a button be kept on top or why should it be kept to the bottom and things like that and of course my manager helped me a lot in terms of understanding uh, and correcting my design mistakes and i will give you the list of the books uh, probably in, towards the end of the slide and i would highly recommend you to read all of those right okay so i think that was the serious part now i think uh, these are something which which is checked in terms of cultural fit okay and and trust me i did reject uh, one or two people because uh, they i felt that they were not like culturally fit right so i'll tell you what happened here um so i was interviewing one person okay and after within the first 10 minutes his phone rang once okay so i thought okay maybe he forgot to keep the phone in silent so he did something with the phone and then he got back to the interview thing so again after 10 minutes the phone rang okay so then i understood okay that person actually did not keep the phone in silent mode maybe he just cut it or something right so i mean if you think about it would you keep your phone in like normal mode and go or would you keep it in silent mode right and even even for the example that whole one hour i could hear the whatsapp pings okay so it it clearly shows he was not serious enough right you are supposed to be serious you're supposed to focus on that interview right it is not supposed to distract the interviewer as well correct so so keep your phone in silent mode that's a very simple uh, thing I, i'm sure most of you do it but i'm just saying that people like this also come to the interview and i rejected them because they showed uh, of they showed serious it, they, they did not even show any seriousness right and uh, 
Now coming to the video interviews, okay. So this is something which I have not faced it when I was taking face-to-face interviews in office. But now that we are doing most of the hiring uh, using video calls, what I thought is you should definitely not uh, you should definitely not dress too casually, okay? Because the first impression would definitely matter, right? So I'm not saying that uh, you should wear um, wear a tie, wear a shirt, and all of that. Saying uh, try to be slightly formally dressed and don't be. It should not be too casual, right? And one more thing is even sitting style, okay? So the sitting style thing, I'll tell you why this is important in video interviews. If at all you came to the big basket office or any office, uh, you would try to maintain certain posture and sit straight and do all of that. But because you are doing this interview at home, there is a natural tendency for you to get get into that relaxed mode when you are talking about something, right? But don't do that. It it does not look good. That's what I'm saying. Like for example, uh, one person, the way he was thing was like. Oh, he was sitting like this, and then answering, and then there was a girl who was touching her hair and talking. So I mean, um, you can't do all this uh, in a meeting. So I'm saying, uh, try to be more uh, cautious when you're doing this video interviews. It's not your fault, but it's the fault of the environment. So be a little more cautious. That's what I would say. Okay. Um, coming to the integrity part of it. Uh, again, I'll give you an example. So I asked a person um, about his website. Okay, so some of the basic things in the front end website was not working. Okay, so even if I search for something and I hit enter, nothing happened. Okay, so I was like, hey, I was just going through this uh, website of yours, and I could not even see basic thing working. So the reaction that he gave was, he was a um, Oh, I don't know. I only take care of back end. I don't know what happens in front end. Um, I mean, I take care only of the of the logistics kind of uh, product, and I really don't care about front end. And the PMs there are like they are really not very careful. So don't talk such things. Okay, <laughs> you are not supposed to. Even though you hate your company or love your company, whatever it is. You are not supposed to talk bad about your current company or any of your previous companies, for that matter. Right? It shows your integrity issues. So even though even though you might have not worked with it, show some positivity. Tell that, oh, is it okay? I was not aware about it. I will definitely get this checked with my other PM teams. Right? So show that seriousness and show that integrity. Don't talk wrong about any of your other teammates or about your company. Right? And coming to the last one, um, just don't talk in a very careless way, right? So be be slightly serious. Like like I told you, that person, the way he spoke was, oh, I know, I don't care about front end. I even told them once, but no one reacted to it. So I stopped telling about it. So don't talk like that, right? So even though you did not take any action in it, at least in the interview, don't show this carelessness, right? Right. So what what I mean to say is, just your uh, soft skills or even even your hard skills. Like even though you're good at documentation or solutioning skills, but if at all you are not qualifying in any of this, if at all you're not showing seriousness, then the interviewer is going to reject you. Right. So that was about uh, the cultural fit. So right. So coming to the common questions which are asked in an e-commerce interview. So these are something which um, I have asked, and these are some of the questions which uh, the interviewers asked me, right? So these are pretty interesting questions that way. But uh, what I would say is, if at all you can be more prepared for these questions, it would really help you. Okay. So for example, um, I've listed around three questions, and these are to uh, test your product sense in general. Okay, like how good are you in terms of Uh, thinking as a product manager, right? So, for example, uh, I will ask you: Give me, uh, tell me an app which you use daily. Uh, what is that you like about it? Right? Or what does, what don't you like about it? Do you think something is missing in that product, right? So, these are some of the questions, um, and I'll tell you why this would help if at all you've prepared before. So, for example, let's say you uh, use Amazon Music every day, okay? The Prime Music. And you will say, I like Prime Music. I think one of the feature which is missing is uh, probably the like button. Okay, uh, like like option for a song. 
okay if at all so why do you need this feature why do you think this feature would make an impact right it's not like okay it's good to have and things like that good to have features and all are actually not built so you would definitely need to have a substantial answer of why you're building something so so probably you can come up with an answer saying okay i like amazon music uh, i i use it daily probably i would have liked um, to have a like button so that a system the amazon system can use this knowledge of oh what are the kind of songs that i'm liking and it could accordingly provide me the recommendations so it it's a good thing for the company and for you right so if at all you can choose any of your app it could be whatsapp also right so think about what is missing in whatsapp what is that you would like to add right and coming to the second question um, your favorite app right so here i would say try to pick something uh, which is which is not so common okay so let's say for example i will say i like slack okay so i like slack for various reasons right so i really like the one of the features is that set a st- status right so people might see that status and they might not even ping you for that matter right so so things like this you can come up with your own uh, favorite apps but have a substantial answer of why you like it and think about how can you improve these things right so and and the other question uh, which is slightly common these days is uh, ab testing um so what is ab testing um so let's say recently google um i think they have started working on this google meet very seriously now right so it, i'll give you an example in my gmail box uh, my personal gmail the the button of start a meeting and uh, join a meeting that is kept to my top right section okay and the same option when i go to my personal uh, my professional gmail id big basket one it is kept to the bottom left okay so maybe google is experimenting with all of us that which is the one where people are noticing or clicking on it maybe maybe the assumption is that this could be more clickable but the results maybe that okay people are clicking more when it's placed at the top right so this is called an ab test right so which so give like two three options and then see which one works the best and then continue with it so and these are something which are gen which is very much done in google and amazon and things like that so it would be better even if you are aware about this you may not have done all of this for sure uh, but even if you are aware about these concepts it will be good right and coming to the behavioral questions uh, these are something which i also ask frequently and i have also been asked uh, so in an in a day to day life you will have to work with a lot of engineers right and if you think about it pms will not have so much technical knowledge as much as developers will have right so maybe there may be many difficult situations with an engineer where um, there is a strong no coming from an engineer right so but you definitely need need to build that so the question could be tell me an example of a difficult situation with an engineer or it could be a difficult situation with a stakeholder so a stakeholder will say no i definitely want this feature but maybe you think that uh, it would not add so much value or maybe we can build it later right so how did you convince the stakeholder right so for example in this case probably you can say okay we'll release this um, in the first phase and we will build this whatever extra feature maybe after one month right so these are the kind of behavioral questions which could be asked and um, one interesting question was uh, give me an example where you did someone else's work okay so so like i told you a pm's job it uh, if you think about it a pm's job is not uh, specific to okay these are the 10 things which you need to know these are the 10 things which you need to do right so you might have read many articles like okay pm needs to wear the hat of a ceo of an engineer of a designer everything right so maybe if at all the engineer uh, is asking for some design change okay and maybe the designer is not available due to bandwidth issue or whatever maybe you need to do that designer's work then right maybe if at all you know the tool then great you can do that tool uh, you can use the tool and uh, you can just do it for yourself and even for example let's say you had to release a feature in the next two days 
and <clears throat> sorry and the qa is not available right so maybe you have to be that qa and you will have to do that testing and release it right so i'm saying coming to a uh, few questions which you can ask the interviewer right so you would have generally um, seen that you should always ask something to the interviewer right so maybe uh, if at all uh, it can be specific then it would give a good impression for the interviewer also right so for example some of the questions which you could ask is um let's say you i am the interviewer and you are the candidate you could ask me that what is the feature that you are currently working on uh, why are you even building that feature how are you solving it right you can ask things like that and it shows that you are uh, kind of curious to learn okay what is happening right so another question which you could ask is uh, if i'm hired what part of the product would i be mostly working on right so i'll tell you how this would help uh, for example if at all you think about an engineer okay um your role would be already very defined right so either you would be an android app developer or ios app developer or a back end developer or a devops engineer or a qa right but uh, in front end if you but in product management if you think about it so there is even within within product management so you will have something like one person working on search one person working on payments one person working on growth right so you might want to know that what part of product would you be working on right so and it also uh, again it shows the interviewer that you're genuinely uh, interested to know more about the role right so and if at all let's say the answer is uh, you are going to work on search so if at all you also have experience working on search as a developer or as a qa or even program management for example if at all you have worked on a search related project you can tell that yes you have worked on something for 2 3 months and you have a lot of knowledge right so there is again a pitch which you can make to the interviewer right and and some of the um, casual questions which you can ask is how big is the product team or how big is the engineering team right so you you would get a sense of uh, how much you would be handling right so if at all there are very few product managers and uh, there are a lot of engineering teams then you will have to deal with a lot of engineering teams at once even for one feature right uh, so so for example if at all you are hired for a front end product management role so in that case you would have to work with the uh, app team you would also have to work with the desktop website team and you would also have to work with the server team right or maybe in back end you might have to work with only one team right so 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 that's what back end oh, by what i mean is, is with reference to big basket uh, by back end what i mean is the supply chain management or or the de- last mile delivery operations right so and i'll tell you why this is an important question uh, so if at all you can ask this question then great or even if the even if the interviewer is asking you this question and if you are the only product manager in your company you should definitely speak about it because um, i mean if at all you are the only product manager then uh, you would be directly talking to the ceo and cfo whatever all the co-founders and and you would be the sole person handling the whole engineering team even if it is only 10 15 people even if you are working in a startup uh but it will it will give the impression that okay there is only one product manager and she is handling um, the founders and handling founders is slightly really tricky because they would want to build everything but you have very limited resource so and at the same time handling like i mean talking to and continuously uh, clearing all the doubts of engineers it it is slightly uh, i would i would say <laughs> it it is fun but at the same time you would need a lot of managerial skills right so i'm saying if at all you're the only person working or if only two people are there in your product team you should definitely highlight it because it will impress the interviewer okay so i i think we are uh, towards the end of uh, two slides so we're saying two more slides i think um so what to highlight in the resume right so one thing which i would like to tell is it's the hr who would do the first level of screening okay and recently only i understood that 
the hr they take only one minute whether to accept a resume or to reject a resume i have been referring a lot of people i think i've referred close to 50 60 people and i think i get replies within one minute or two minutes saying rejected or accepted so i'm saying um be keep keep hr in mind okay so it's not that only another pm is going to see your resume okay so keeping that in mind uh, i would like to highlight four points here so one is don't use acronyms okay so in one of the resumes where i told you that i could not even understand half the things so he had written implemented regular eb reading okay and i have no idea about this okay <laughs> and even eb if i google about it it gives me some random results but then when i understood what his company does and all of that i understood that eb means electricity bill okay so i mean it it was tough for me only to understand and i don't know if hrs also will be able to understand this so try not to use acronyms that is what i would say right even in interviews and even in your resumes okay unless it's a very very standard thing like it, if it's let's say prd i think most of them will understand what is prd it is or it is brd business required document or product required document but something like eb reading and things like that you should definitely try to avoid okay and uh, i had one liner about your previous company so uh, i mean for example i tell you recently i interviewed someone from finastra okay and i have no idea what that company does okay see if at all uh, your resume is from mintra or something then okay it is something which everyone would have known at least even if they are not used but let's say if it is something from some company uh, which you might have not used then it's better to put that one liner okay it is helpful even for the hr and even for the uh, even for the pm who is taking a look at your resume okay in highlight relevant experience so let's say you have had around 5 years of experience okay and maybe you have worked on um, e-commerce domain for one year and maybe the other four you have worked on let's say something else let's say fintech so maybe in that case what you need to do is try to highlight more um, on the e-commerce company whatever you have done there try to highlight that more so that even the hr understands oh he has lot of knowledge about e-commerce he has written a lot about uh, e-commerce right rather than fintech so i i would say try to focus on the relevant experience and tweak your resume based on the interview right based on the company that you're going for i know it's slightly tough because it's like okay there is one resume and you want to just use it for every company but i think if at all you can invest that extra half an hour to tweak um, your resume for whatever company you are applying it would definitely help okay and um, oh, the last one is very interesting okay and this is one of the reasons why many of the resumes were even rejected by the hr within one minute okay so if at all you are switching frequently okay and if at all um, you have written uh, companies where you have experienced less than 6 months and all i would say rather don't even include it okay it's it's better to not talk about that 6 months of experience and hrs will say okay i i tell you why this is important because they feel that it is a stability issue okay you might have left that company for a good reason or a bad reason but the hr does not know unless they talk to you about it um, so i would say if it all there's something which is like only 6 uh, months of experience or lesser than that just exclude it it is much better to exclude it and even if uh, the hrs ask about uh, why was the gap there maybe you can tell you were improving on your whatever pm skills or you were going to some training or you were improving on your design skills that would be better because seeing this switching while of business there is a high chance that anyone would reject it so always keep hr in mind okay so this is my favorite one okay so this actually i thought about it only yesterday when i spoke to few more folks okay so there is one trick okay which you can use to impress the interviewer even before your interview starts okay so let's say um, you are trying to uh, go to amazon for example or or big basket so what you do is try to use that product okay try to use that product see what all you can improve okay uh 
let or even suggest let's say even if at all you come across few bucks okay write it down put it in that document and see what all other things that you can improve okay and send it to the interviewer or send it to even the hr or the interviewer and ask them to take a look at it that this is some this was just um th- this was just your research work that you did about the website and just send it and trust me if at all it is good you are already halfway through okay so it it shows i'll tell you why it's important and why it works it's because the person will be happy that you invested time in the web, in the company already that right? you are trying to understand the product or you have already partially understood the product right so it would definitely impress the interviewer because you have invested time right and you are if at all you can talk about the vision of the product that you are seeing let's say you joined big basket or you joined amazon tell that okay i saw these problems in search and i will definitely like to improve the site search in this case right so things like that it will definitely impress the interviewer and i'll give you one example also okay so we were hiring a seo uh, digital marketing person for seo so what he did is um he even before the interview started so two days before only he did all the work on the website okay he saw okay what are the pages okay just to give you an idea of what is seo for people who might not know is uh, it's search engine optimization so seo what it does is if at all you search for um, online grocery on on google the first result that you see should be bigbasket.com right if at all your first result is bigbasket.com that means you are doing good in your seo right that organically google is picking your website for people who are searching online grocery okay so so i'll tell you what that person did so that person uh, even before the interview he just went through all the pages he used his seo tools and he said okay this is the page where google is not even able to uh, crawl this is the page where google is able to crawl but it is finding very less content so he did that like Uh, an extensive research on on big basket pages and he sent that okay this is what i am going to do i am going to change the like i would suggest that we should change the language from a to b and this will help google crawl more content right and and trust me what i heard from that uh, person and even the person who interviewed is that there was no longer any questions of seo in that interview he was already halfway through the only things that were judged about was other things like maybe the behavioral skills and all of that so i would say if at all you can invest time in the company um in use that product okay uh, even if you cannot come up with the vision for the product and all try to suggest at least few improvements or even write down some bugs if you find out and just send it before the interview it will really help okay oh uh, and this is the last slide so these are some of the books i would definitely recommend uh, to people who are trying to become pms or even if you are a budding pm uh, very early in your career like me uh, these are the books which helped me a lot in terms of product thinking and even design thinking so hooked is something oh, sorry hooked is something i'll tell you it will even help you crack the interviews okay it will give you such nice solutions right uh, you can readily use it if at all an interviewer asks you some question okay um, the design of everyday things um, and don't make me think so these are something which is which really helped uh, in terms of framing that design thinking mindset okay and nudge and predictably rational these are uh, related to human psychology and it is very good for a pm to understand it It, because we might not have studied any anything related to human psychology so these two are really good books and very simple reads very simple english so i would highly recommend you to read these right. thanks so much bhavna thanks for your time and uh, you know making the session so uh, relatable and uh, you know uh, the kind of examples that you shared i am sure would have helped to some extent around uh, to all these students Thanks so much. Awesome awesome. Thanks thanks folks. Thanks Sarika. Bye.